So in one of my most recent videos, I went over all of the leaked information we have on raids coming with the first expansion of Diablo 4, and more specifically going over all of this information from the massive file of leaked strings or code. But in this video, I want to go over mercenaries that also seem to be coming with the first Diablo 4 expansion. And these mercenaries would be the first follower system for Diablo 4. The Diablo franchise has had multiple iterations of follower systems whether it be the mercenary system from Diablo 2 or the follower system from Diablo 3. So it makes complete sense that we would get a similar system coming with Diablo 4. And it actually seems this is going to be a pretty expansive version of a follower system because we have a ton of information from these leaked strings, including things like how many different mercenaries we're actually going to get, a bunch of different abilities, the possibility of different quest lines, a mercenary hideout, and a ton of other information. And keep in mind, this file was obtained like five to six months ago, so this wasn't even being close to completed, so there may even be other systems tied into this mercenary system that we don't have information on yet. And I think a good place to start is just how many mercenaries are we actually going to have access to, or at least how many mercenaries were in the code when this was leaked. And we actually do have what seems to be a list of all of the mercenaries that were in this file of strings. So we have the shield bearer, the berserker crone, the maiden and mongrel, which seem to be one follower, the cursed child, the bounty hunter, the scholar, and the thief. So a good chunk of these harkening back to the mercenary system from Diablo. 2, the Maiden and the Mongrel is actually pretty interesting because it seems this is either two followers that you would get both of them and they probably would both be like half the strength of a normal follower, or this may also be one mercenary that maybe has like two different forms and maybe you can choose to make it one of the forms or maybe it switches between the forms. But if I'd have to guess, this is probably you get two mercenaries that are just half the strength of normal ones and you get some customization for both of them. Now with all of these mercenaries, there's also going to be a mercenary hideout. So this seems to be pointing to the mercenaries kind of having their own hub that you'll go to, you'll find all the mercenaries, and it's specifically detailed that in the hideout, you can go and hire all of the different mercenaries, which is kind of exactly how you would expect this system to work, but all of the mercenaries also have another label as professions, and I'm not exactly sure what that is. My first thought is that these professions are just kind of a shorthand for all of the customization you can do to each mercenary. So you'd go up to them, you could hire them, or you could look at their profession, which would be all the different skills you have, the gear you have on them, and a potential talent or passive tree. And alongside that, we do also have some files that seem to be showing that you're going to be going through quest lines with your mercenaries. There's actually a decently long list of quests for each one of the mercenaries. And there's a bunch of different ways that this could actually happen. It could be that you have to do a quest line with each mercenary to to get them as a hireable mercenary, or it could be that after you hire a mercenary, you could somehow unlock like a story quest with them. A lot of other RPGs and specifically single player RPGs that have followers, usually you can build up to do specific quest lines based around that follower and go into some of their backstory or some really important story revolving around that follower. And I'm not sure which one it's going to be because I also didn't see any quest line that unlocks you the mercenary hideout. So it might just be like a quest line of the main campaign for the expansion would take you to the hideout. Then maybe you have a quest for each one of the mercenaries to be able to permanently hire them and customize them. Now, it is also pretty interesting when looking into the mercenary hideout because there are also some files that have all of the mercenaries tagged with being crafters. So there's crafter mercenary, shield bearer, berserker and crone, etc, etc. And in this list, there's also the raid crafter, which I went over in my last leak video where there's different tiers to the raid and it seems like there's going to be a crafter that allows you to craft items to get into the different tiers and these are all labeled as different crafters so it would also be pretty interesting if these mercenaries also doubled as crafters which is also another possibility with the professions of these followers because there is a possibility that you go unlock this mercenary hideout it has all of these mercenaries in there and you can go do a quest line to be able to permanently hire these mercenaries but all of these mercenaries could also double as a crafting NPC to do different things.
things. We know from these files and the itemization rework that Blizzard wants to add much more crafting into the game. So it could actually be a pretty cool system to make all of the different mercenaries also play a role as one of the crafters in an expanded crafting system. Now, another pretty big piece of information are these massive lists of functions for mercenaries. Now, this kind of starts out with just a bunch of different pieces of code that just sets like different animations or things for say running, walking, their idling animations, getting into combat, even riding on mounts, and different animations that would be tied to riding a mount. But within these massive lists of files, we can actually see a bunch of different abilities and attacks that these mercenaries will have access to. So for instance, for the shield bearer, we have primary skill, we have bastion, we have Omnicast. Then getting into some of the more specific abilities, we have Shield Throw, Charge Skill, we have something just titled Magic, you have Ground Slam, you have Provoke, you have Basic Bash, and that's definitely not all of the abilities. This is just some of the abilities shown in these massive lists, because as you go through all of these different strings, there are just random pieces of code everywhere that has different abilities for every single one of these mercenaries. Now this obviously was a testing build that was pretty early on, so so even some of these different mercenaries almost seem like they had placeholder abilities where they just took abilities from player classes and put them on that mercenary just to test different pieces of the mercenary. And then they would replace those abilities with the more unique ones that the mercenaries are actually going to be launching with. But there are tons and tons of abilities. Not only that, but it also shows that most of the mercenaries have multiple different weapons that they can use. Now, it didn't seem like any of these different weapons you could give them would give new new options for abilities. It was more just showing that these mercenaries can use different weapons. So then we have some abilities for the mercenary crone. We have whirlwind, war cry, cleave, leap, double strike. We have call the ancients, charge, death blow, double swing, ground stomp, iron mailstorm, iron skin kick, lunging strike, rally and cry, rupture, weapon attack, just tons of different abilities. Now the berserker crone is the one that seems to have basically all the abilities from the barbarian, which I guess would make sense for a berserker mercenary but it very much could be the possibility that these are just placeholders because as you go through all these different strings, there are other more unique abilities, even for the Berserker Crone. And all of those abilities we just went over were labeled as dual wielding, but then we also have two-handed for basically all of those same abilities. So again, it seems mercenaries are at least gonna have a few options of different types of weapons they're actually able to use. But again, I didn't see any different or unique abilities when looking between between the different weapons that they can actually use. But then we have some abilities for the Cursed Child. You have basic attacks, you have metamorphosis, you have firestorm, shadow tendrils, wither, flame surge, haunt. Cursed Child honestly seems like the most interesting of the mercenaries because there are also other points where they mentioned going in like demon form, which may just be metamorphosis with another name, but it does seem to be that that might be separate things. So the Cursed Child may be like some demon transformer where they can go in different demon forms. Seems pretty interesting. Then we have the Bounty Hunter with Molotov, Heavy Attack, Concussive Trap, Salvo, Scatter Traps, and those are just labeled under Bow, but then they also have some abilities labeled under what seems to be a Crossbow, some of the same abilities labeled under it. And then we have the Scholar with attacks like Omni Channel and Damage Beam. So there are a lot of of abilities from all of these different mercenaries that all seem to be activatable abilities, like their actual abilities they're using. And because there are so many, it's pretty much guaranteed that we get to select what abilities or skills that they're actually gonna be using. I doubt they're gonna have like maybe a dozen plus abilities that they can just use at all times. But past the actual usable abilities from your mercenaries, it also seems like there's gonna be multiple other forms of passive effects or different ways you can customize your mercenaries. And the first one being that there's some stuff labeled as perks, specifically some stuff under the shield bear labeled as perks cheat death, perks parry dash, perk parry deflect, and there's some other examples of this for every single mercenary. There actually wasn't a lot under perks, so this may be another system that was just starting to be worked on when this file was leaked. That's a pretty big possibility because it does seem like there was at least a little bit of these added for all the mercenaries, so I could very much see perks being an additional passive tree or something like that that you customize your mercenaries with 
with. But then there was also passives labeled for every mercenary, and there seemed to be a lot more passives for every single one. So here we have shield bearer passive A1, B1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, B2, B3, B4, B5, B6. And there was a pretty long list of these for every single mercenary, and these are under different labelings than these perks. These, these perks also had a little bit of additional information, so it seems like both perks and passives are different things that may be two different ways to customize your mercenary. Now, these lists of passives are almost certainly going to be in some probably talent tree, probably similar to what our player classes have to where you can choose their abilities. Then there will probably be passives off those abilities and then maybe other passives throughout the tree. I think there's a decent possibility that they kind of just copy the class trees from our playable classes and make versions of them for the mercenaries, maybe a bit slimmed down. I could very much see that being the case. Now, as mentioned, perks could be another way to customize or perks could potentially just be some built in passives for every different mercenary. Maybe the shield bearer just has these handful of perks. They're just things a shield bearer has as passives. And maybe they could even have different sets of perks that you switch between. So there's a decent bit of possibilities, but I don't think any of these current leaks point to these perks being anything too specific yet. And there are also mentions throughout these files to some different pieces of gear that seem to be tied directly to these mercenaries. Now, the initial rounds of leaks before this file was actually released did also make mention of being able to gear up your mercenaries. So other people looking through these files must have gotten the idea that you could very much gear up your mercenaries, probably from these different mentions of gear. And, and that's something that I would very much want with this mercenary system. Because if I could just make my own mercenary system, I would definitely want them to have their own set of gear that we can equip them with, whether that being gear specific to the mercenaries or maybe just a few slots specific to them, and then we could just give them any other gear we have. I would definitely want a full set of gear for the mercenaries. Then I would also want a talent tree similar to our player talent trees where we can choose their abilities, choose like augments to those abilities, and then choose different passives. Because even if none of this customization on your mercenary tied directly to your character, like if it didn't give your character anything, but it just makes your mercenary stronger and they're going to be with you so they're going to be able to do a bunch of damage maybe taunt enemies maybe send out heals i think that would still be something really interesting for the game so overall i think the mercenary system that it seems 100 certain we're getting with the first diablo 4 expansion is looking pretty good is looking pretty interesting but that's pretty much all i want to go over so thanks for watching